Hi, it's me again with Corrode Roll Tips and Tricks. I've done several videos on Text of Path, but somebody just asked me when they put their text at the bottom, it's backwards. So we take this text and go to text. Text the path, and then I put paragraph text, uh, text, fit text the path, and then put it on our path. You can see it's upside down and backwards. Well, you can always do this, mirror it one way or the other in the other way, and that's pretty easy and good, and, but sometimes it doesn't work. What you can do, and I do it a lot, I go ahead and take my text and I mirror it upside down, I mirror it left to right. And then I go to text. Oh, uh, fit text to path and put it on our line. And now you can see it's right where it should be. Now, I wasn't gonna make a video just for that, but if you wanna stretch out the letters a little bit, because always a lot of times on text that's on the bottom, it's too crowded. So you can grab your shape tool and go right here and spread it out and it'll spread out your text a little bit more or even bring it in if you want it. And then as always, if you click off of it and get back to your pick tool, you have this tool right here that not only this one rotates it around the circle. So if we click on here, watch it slowly move to the left or right. It's going uphill because if we put in zero, it's going to go to the top of the page or top of the path as like right there. So go back to like, it was like 32. And if that's not enough, go 34. And I always bring in indexing lines and just kind of put it up the top of the T or whatever letter, and then grab our text and go right here and just barely minutely move it up where it's the same distance. But that's how I do it. And this way is just as good. Um, but if you're doing a lot of them, and instead of rotating, you could rotate them all. You know, if you had a bunch of names to put in there. And as always, you could... So one of these moves it around the circle. This one moves it off the circle. So we go downhill. You know, of course, it's moving around the circle too. But see how it's getting off the path? and going further down the path. Now we can always get it. Let's go ahead and go till it gets to about the center of that path. And then we could always go here and go back. I went too far. I went too many clicks and the Corel's trying to keep up with it. Finally stopped. Uh, Let's just type in negative one. And see how it's now it's about in the middle. So now you can grab this right here and minutely move it or you know go like 36, put it back closer. Let's go 38 and let's go 37. And you can see that's about the same distance. So now you can fine tune it and just barely click it up. We're going like 37.2. 37.3, and that looks pretty good if that's what you wanted. This is a good way to, say, kind of put like text in the middle of a, a two, two circles. So if we select it all now, you go up to object, break text apart, that'll break that apart, and then take this ellipse, control D and make a duplicate while holding down the control button, grab your two-sided, or excuse me, your shift key, and then control D and make a duplicate of that, and hold down your shift key and let it go to the outside. Whoa. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Boy. So take that one and just start moving it, holding down the shift key. Well, we need to actually put it back out now. Wow, I don't know what that's, why that's doing that. My computer's having trouble keeping up.
But the shift key is going to keep it growing in a circle. So the best thing to do is just delete that path. And then even though our path's gone now, you could minutely like, like put your nudge factor on point two and just kind of raise that up to put it in the middle. Anyway, I hope that helped and answered their question and thank you for watching.